Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I talk you through a large sleep study performed on the Garmin sleep tracking algorithm that is being used in many Garmin devices. I'll explain how the study was performed, what the results were, and how that compares to the sleep tracking accuracy of other devices. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Let me start by giving you some background on the study. The study was performed by the University of Kansas in collaboration with Garmin. In this study, they actually developed a sleep algorithm that was later deployed into production on many Garmin wearable devices. The researchers used the Garmin VivoSmart 3 to collect the data, but the algorithm was later introduced into many other Garmin devices in addition to the Garmin VivoSmart 3. To create an algorithm for sleep tracking, they compared the Garmin device against an EEG device as a reference. EEG devices can measure your brain waves while you're sleeping and are one of the best ways of measuring your sleep. The Garmin device uses movement, heart rate and heart rate variability to track your sleep stages. Specifically, the computer algorithm developed by the researchers was a neural network and they used it to score each night for the four different sleep stages, that being light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep, and awake. In total, 55 individuals participated in the study, and they wore a portable scientific EEG device called the Sleep Profiler as a reference. What I found interesting is that out of these 55 individuals, 14 indicated that they have a sleep disorder or that they take medications that might impact their sleep. So they didn't just study normal healthy sleepers, but also people with sleep issues, which is a good thing. Enough background, let's get to the results. First, I will describe the results from the study, then I will compare that to the results I got when I tested the Garmin Venue SQ, and finally, I will compare it to other sleep trackers. Let's first take a look at the individual nights of sleep data. Now, Garmin did not release all the raw data, so I cannot go through all the nights, but they did show three nights of data. Specifically, they showed the best night, the worst night, and the representative average night. Let's start with the representative average night. That is what I displayed here. On top, you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of night. So on the left is the very beginning of the night and on the right, the moment the participant woke up. However, Garmin did not provide an actual time for each of these, so there are no markings of time. On the vertical axis, we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. These sleep stages are plotted in the same order that are usually displayed in research. On the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded by the Garmin device. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we see decent agreement. The Garmin picked up on the first two deep sleep segments, but at the end it was less accurate, detecting some extra deep sleep that was not really there. Next, let's look at REM sleep, which I marked here in red. Here we see quite good agreement between the Garmin device and the sleep EEG device. Surprisingly, the EEG device did not pick up on any REM sleep in the first third of the night, whereas the Garmin device did. Generally, I would have expected some REM sleep here, so it makes sense that the Garmin device predicted some REM sleep. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep, together called non-REM, and always ends in REM. According to the EEG device, there were two sleep cycles, whereas the Garmin device would divide the first sleep cycle into two parts. I'm not sure what to make of this, since generally you would expect more than two sleep cycles in a single night. It might be because this person actually woke up quite a bit during the night, as marked here in green. Looking at awake time, we see that the Garmin device missed quite some short awakenings, and only picked up on the longer awakening near the end of the night. Looking at sleep start and sleep end, we see that the main mistake the Garmin made was near the beginning of the night, where it already predicted some light sleep while the person was still fully awake. Next, let's look at the night which was predicted best by Garmin, which is displayed here. If we first look at deep sleep, we see that the Garmin device predicted most deep sleep correctly, though it missed two short segments. Looking at REM sleep, this was predicted almost perfectly by the Garmin device. It picked up on all the REM sleep and also at the right moment. 
This also means that the sleep cycles are almost perfect for this night. Also, the short awakenings were detected quite well for this night. Again, the EEG device detected more than the Garmin device, but overall the agreement is quite good. Sleep start and sleep end were also really good for this night. Now this makes sense of course, since this was the best night that Garmin predicted. Now let's take a look at the night with the worst prediction accuracy by Garmin, which is displayed here. If we look at deep sleep, we see that for this night the Garmin device detected way too little deep sleep, though what it detected was at the right moment. On the other hand, it detected way too much REM sleep, and also often at the wrong moment. This also means we would not be able to see the sleep cycles for this night, and also the awake moments were not detected very well. The only thing that still looked rather good is sleep start and sleep end detection, so the total time in bed is still mostly correct for this night. Based on these results so far, the Garmin algorithm looks quite good. Picking up on all the sleep cycles seems to be the aspect it struggles with the most, However, even for the worst night of sleep prediction, it was able to detect the moment of sleep start and the moment of awakening quite well. Let's now have a look at the statistics over all 55 individuals. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter, which I'll link below. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say about the accuracy of the Garmin sleep tracking algorithm. First, let's take a look at the total percentage of each sleep stage the EEG device on the left and the Garmin device on the right predicted. Overall, these percentages look really good. The Garmin device predicts a little bit too much deep sleep and too much REM sleep, whereas it has too little light sleep and too little awake time. However, overall, the accuracy is really good. More important even than these total percentages is checking if the Garmin predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. And that's what I displayed here. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left, the sleep stages according to Garmin. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Garmin. First of all, we see that 68.9% of what was actually deep sleep was also predicted as deep sleep. Most of the time, if a mistake was made with deep sleep, deep sleep was confused with light sleep. Next, looking at light sleep, we see that this was also predicted correctly a little over two thirds of the time. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. Looking at REM sleep, we see that almost 70% of what was actually REM sleep was also predicted as REM sleep. Most of the time when REM sleep was predicted wrongly, it was predicted as being light sleep. Finally, looking at awake time, we see that this was predicted the best out of all sleep stages. Almost 75% of what was awake time was also predicted as awake time. When it was confused, it was most often confused with light sleep and REM sleep. Overall, the accuracy was 69.7% which means these numbers look pretty good for the Garmin device. However, how does this compare to other wearables I've tested and other tests I've done? Let's take a look. I previously tested the Garmin Venue SQ against a scientific EEG device similar to the sleep analyzer used in the Garmin study. I'll link that video below. If we look at the total percentages of each of these sleep stages, these were quite good for the Venue SQ, which is in line with what Garmin showed in their study. However, if we look at the confusion of the different sleep stages, we see that the Garmin Venue SQ performed much worse than what Garmin showed in their study. We can see here that deep sleep was often confused with light sleep, and especially REM sleep and awake were predicted quite poorly. If we put the results from the Garmin Venue SQ here on the right, and those from the Garmin sleep study here on the left side by side, we see quite big differences. The Garmin VivoSmart S3 performed much better than the Garmin Venue SQ, especially when it comes to REM sleep and awake prediction. The Garmin study shows much better results than the results I found for my Garmin Venue SQ. But how do these results compare to some of the better sleep trackers I've tested in the past? Let's have a look. Here we see the results for four different sleep trackers. On the top left, we have the results for the Garmin Sleep Study of the Vivo Smart 3. On the top right, we have the results for the Garmin Venue SQ. On the bottom left, the results for the Fitbit Inspire 2. And the bottom right are the results for the Withing Sleep Analyzer. Overall, Fitbit devices have been the best wearable sleep trackers I've tested so far, as you can see here. 
According to the Garmin study, the Garmin VivoSmart 3 should be about as good. As you can see here on the bottom right, the under mattress sleep tracker from Withings, the sleep analyzer, is also close to these when it comes to accuracy. So if the results from the Garmin sleep study are correct, this means that the Garmin VivoSmart 3 is among the best sleep trackers I've seen. However, this does not match my results for the Garmin Venue SQ. So why are the results from the Garmin study so much better than what I found for the Venue SQ? I can think of several explanations. First of all, they optimized their algorithm using the same reference device that they used to test the accuracy, and the same people process the data. It could be if they used a different EEG device or different people evaluating the data that the results might be worse. Second, it could be that the algorithm was too optimized for the Vivo Smart 3 specifically, and that this does not translate well to other Garmin devices. Third, the study was made public in the summer of 2019. It could be that in the meantime the algorithm changed or that they implemented a different algorithm for the Venue SQ. Fourth, the study was sponsored and partially conducted by Garmin. So there might have been subconscious bias in evaluating the results in a more positive way. How good is Garmin at sleep tracking and should you buy a Garmin device specifically for sleep tracking? Well, at this point I'm unsure. Based on my own test, I would not recommend it. However, ideally, I would test several more Garmin devices to be sure, and that way I could make a more general statement. Until that time, if you're interested in tracking your sleep stages using a wrist-worn wearable, I would recommend a Fitbit product, like the Fitbit Charge 4, Fitbit Sense, or Fitbit Inspire 2 I looked at a few weeks ago. All these have been shown to be pretty good at sleep tracking. I should mention some of the limitations of the Garmin study I discussed here. First of all, it was not peer-reviewed, meaning no independent scientists looked at the results. Second, people that had a tattoo on the wrist were excluded, since that might interfere with the measurements. Third, in total there were 38 men and 17 women that participated, so the results were slightly biased towards men. Also, the study was made public in June of 2019, so it might be that they changed the algorithm in the meantime. Finally, to do a full sleep comparison, it would have been good if they tested the Garmin device against a full scientific polysomnography setup. I'm actually building my own polysomnography device using OpenBCI components as we speak, and the first components have already been assembled. This way, I'll not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of corona. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the ScanWatch, and in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.